Welcome everyone to Letchworth State Park. My name is Elijah. I'm an environmental educator here in the park. Today we're going to talk a little bit about geology. Now, when we talk about geology, what are we really talking about? Well, geology is the study of the earth, earth formations, and the forces of change that cause all of those different features that we find on the surface of the earth. And what better place to start our conversation about geology than right here at Inspiration Point Overlook. Inspiration Point, where we're starting off today, was a favorite spot of William Pryor Letchworth, the namesake of our park. He would come here, sit, enjoy the view of Middle Falls, Upper Falls, which is upstream of that, and he would watch the flowing of the mighty Genesee River. The Genesee River is a major force of change here in the park, and believe it or not, it has not always been flowing in this exact same spot. If you follow me over this way, I'll show you what I'm talking about. As we look from this perspective of Inspiration Point Overlook, we see a valley way off in the distance. In that valley is where the Genesee River used to flow just over two million years ago before the start of the last ice age. The ice age gets its name because of the huge sheets of ice we call glaciers. If you look at the clouds outside today, that's how high the glaciers would have been, about a mile thick, causing a lot of erosion on the surface of the earth. As the glaciers would freeze, they were scratching up the earth's surface with debris that they picked up along the way, rocks and boulders and things. And as they would melt, all the rocks and other debris that the glaciers were hanging on to were dropped in place. That created temporary dams where the river had to find a new path around these barriers. During the last ice age, as glaciers were freezing and thawing, coming in and going out of this area, they bullied the path of the river, forced it to change course. We see from Inspiration Point what we call an interglacial riverbed, where the river was flowing in between the time of glaciers being here and melting away and then coming back. Eventually, the river found its current path. So the gorge we look at today is considered by geologists to be quite young. When we say quite young, what we mean is the gorge we look at in Letchworth State Park today has only been carved out in the past maybe 10,000 years or so, which sounds like a really long time. But in the history of the entire Earth, 10,000 years is not more than a blink of an eye. Even if I hadn't told you about the Ice Age and you knew nothing about the power of glaciers, just looking at the characteristics of our gorge today tell us that we are looking today into a very youthful canyon. The characteristic of a youthful canyon, a youthful river path, are these steep vertical rock cliffs. In other parts of Letchworth State Park, where the river meanders back into its pre-glacial riverbed, we see characteristics of an older river channel with sloping hills and a very wide valley. And now that we've left the Inspiration Point Overlook, we find ourselves in the area of the Lower Falls. In order to drive from Inspiration Point Overlook down to the Lower Falls area, we had to drive on the long, flat park road. We made a turn down Lower Falls Road, which is a very steep hill. We now find ourselves at the bottom of Lower Falls Road, 
at this wide open parking lot. In a moment, we're gonna take a short hike, descend down another steep hill, and find ourselves at a flat slab of rock. So I like to think of our journey as, as a large staircase. We went from flat ground to steep ground, to flat ground to steep ground, flat ground, eventually going even steeper would bring us down to the Genesee River itself. That giant staircase effect comes from the glaciers that were pushing the course of the river here and there. Where the glaciers would drop all the debris they were hanging on to, those glacial dams, moraines we call them, created a temporary lake environment. Today, if you visit any freshwater lake in western New York State and you drain all the water out of that lake, the very bottom will be almost completely flat. That's how lake erosion works. With all the swirling and churning of sediments, it grinds that lake bottom down to an almost completely flat surface. With the Genesee River, eventually all that flowing water found a way around that moraine, around that glacial dam, cut deeper into the surface of the earth, that temporary lake drained out. And what we're left with are these large flat areas followed by steep hills that lead to another large flat area. So join me now as we take a closer look down towards the lower falls. Now that we've made it down into the gorge itself, we can really get a sense of the layers of rock that make up our gorge wall. Now, taking a look at it, I like to think of it as almost like a storybook laying on its side with the earliest chapters written down on the bottom, the most recently written chapters sitting up on top. And when you really take the time to study each rock layer, take the time to read that story, you get a sense of what the environment was like around here when each one of these layers was being formed. When you look into the gorge here in Letchworth State Park, the rocks you're looking at are sedimentary rocks, which get that name because they're made of sediments, which are bits and pieces of usually other rocks. The sedimentary rocks in our gorge are right around 350 million years old, and they were being formed at the bottom of an ocean that was here at that time. When these rocks were being formed, that was long before any dinosaur ever roamed the earth. About 350 million years ago, when the ocean was here, the Appalachian mountain chain was probably the highest mountain chain in the entire world. After millions of years of weathering, so those rocks breaking apart thanks to snow and ice and wind and rain, millions of years of erosion, all those broken rock pieces, all those sediments sliding downhill, eventually those sediments would find the ocean that was here, the sediments would sink to the bottom to form new sedimentary rocks. Now depending on where in the gorge you're looking at our rock walls, you can get a sense of when each rock layer was formed, what the ocean environment was like at that time. Now upriver of where we are now, by the middle falls, we see a lot of sandstone, which as you guessed it gets its name because it's made mostly of sand. Sand is a bigger, heavier particle, so it settles out, it sinks to the bottom of water pretty quickly. So we assume, but in the middle falls area where we find a lot of layers of sandstone rock, those layers of our gorge wall were being formed at a time when the ocean was quite shallow because the big heavy sand particles were able to make it to that part of the ocean. Now around here, the lower falls area of our gorge, you don't see so much sandstone, we see more of what we call shale rock. This shale rock is very soft and crumbly and it's made of teeny tiny little clay particles. Clay is so small and so light that when it's dropped into a body of water, it stays suspended, it stays floating for a long time. So when we look at the layers of rock here by the lower falls area of Letra State Park, we assume that the ocean environment was quite deep when these layers of shale rock were being formed. So deep, so that only these teeny tiny clay particles that make up this shale rock 
were able to float out this far into a big, wide, very deep ocean that was here. This shale rock is very soft. It is not a durable rock whatsoever. This rock is so soft that me, with my human hands alone, I can break this rock right, right apart. Now imagine what the Genesee River and all the power behind it can do to this soft, crumbly shale rock. Looking just downstream of Lower Falls now, we're looking at a small section of river channel where the gorge erodes probably faster than any other spot in all of Letchworth State Park. And that happens here for two reasons. One, just look at how narrow this river channel is. All the water of the Genesee River that spreads all over big wide middle falls is then squeezed and compacted into this very narrow channel in front of us. The second reason that erosion happens so quickly in this one spot is not only that narrow river channel, but this narrow channel is also lined almost completely in that soft crumbly shale. So after a big rain or other precipitation event, all the water that the Genesee River collects rips and tears right through this narrow channel of shale rock. We often get questions about the rates of erosion here in Letchworth State Park, but unfortunately it can be pretty difficult to predict that kind of thing. And if you follow me, I'll show you an example as to why that might be. This big rock fall behind me is a great example of why it's so tough for us to predict the rates of erosion of our gorge walls here in Letchworth State Park. Because our gorge is made up of all those sedimentary rocks, the soft sandstone, the even softer shale, huge chunks of rock can break apart all at once. I can tell you though, that most of our larger erosion events like this rock fall behind me, do tend to happen late winter, early spring time of year. You think to yourself, why might that be? Think about what the weather is like, end of winter, beginning of spring. Earlier in the winter with all the cold and snow and ice, the water that trickles down into the cracks of our sedimentary rock walls will freeze. You might know that freezing is an expansion process. When water freezes, it gets bigger. So picture that water that trickles down into the cracks of the rock. When it freezes, it gets bigger, pushes those cracks of rock further apart, push, breaks that rock apart even more, and then freezes. Solid ice is inside of our gorge wall. At the end of winter, getting into early springtime, the weather's warming up, that ice slowly melts, it trickles out of the gorge wall, and as it seeps through the cracks of the gorge wall, it erodes away, it brings with it the large chunks of rock that it had broken apart earlier in the season. Again, this rock fall behind me is a really good example of that. Most of that big pile of rock behind me all fell down, eroded away off the gorge wall all at once in mid-April 2015. Those of us that work here in Letchworth State Park went home one evening. We came back the next morning. Wouldn't you know it, hundreds of tons of new sedimentary rock were laying on the riverbed here in our gorge. Now remember, the rates of erosion are not always the same throughout Letchworth State Park. Here by Lower Falls with the soft crumbly shale, things change, things erode much faster. That rock fall we were just observing is a great example. And I'd like to share a photo of another good example of how quickly things can change, things can erode away here by the Lower Falls. We have a photo from the middle of the 1800s, while Mr. Letchworth was still around. This photo shows a group of people in 
enjoying a sunny summer afternoon by the lower falls. If you look carefully at that photo, you'll notice that the lower falls in that photo would be just below where I'm sitting here. Fast forward less than 200 years later to today, lower falls have eroded upstream the length of about one and a half football fields. In just over 150 years, lower falls went from just about beneath where I'm sitting now back to where we see it today. changing here in Letchworth State Park, thanks in large part to the power of the Genesee River, a constant force of change. Thank you so much for joining me. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you have about Letchworth State Park geology, and be sure to take a good long look at the gorge the next time you visit us before it changes again.